Nick, you simplified my job. You talked about concussion, the severe concussion, and what happened after in the rehabilitation. And to confuse you more, I'm not going to talk about the big concussion. I'm going to talk later on in the small concussion. But for this audience, I uh, elected to do a uh, thoughtful uh, lecture uh, divided into three parts. The first part is on <coughs> how we have advanced in brain evolution and in brain knowledge and how far we are yet from reaching our maturity of brain function and brain chemistry. I will dwell on that. So I'll give you the latest things, what I think has happened in rehabilitation that may help all these uh, things that we are dealing with. The second one will be a local affair of how many moose hit us and kill us and uh, uh, statistics of Canada in Newfoundland. And thirdly, about concussion, which is a very vague term. Nick alluded to it and he said, I am had a bad concussion. I don't know nothing about the headache this, the headache that. But 95% of people who are concussed are missed. They don't know, you see stars, you see the moon, you uh, break your marriage, uh, your memory is shut up, and then you're depressed, etc., 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 and no one knows about it. And keep on charging and driving and go to the second team, kill him, hockey, this, that, the other. So I'm going to dwell a little bit on that. So uh, the first uh, uh, part of the talk is uh, about that famous instrument that we are dealing with, the brain. And when you think about it, really, it's, it's an amazing, and this is why something uh, has to be present, whatever we call him, God or mind, whatever, I don't know. I'm not going to go through that. It's only three pound chunk. And uh, it's, uh, Emily Dickinson said it is wider than the sky. And it carries its work, of course, electronically at the molecular level. And this is where we are starting to see little light with the MRI. You know, you dream about a beautiful scene on the carabine and your temporal lobe lights up. We're just the beginning of things that we're going to see in this, uh, this, uh, in this brain and how we're going to remedy if it is injury. The best way I can tell you for now, prevent, protect your brain and prevent it from being knocked because it's holy. And, uh, <coughs> and if you go through the evolution of the brain itself, whether you believe in Darwin or not, uh, there is a reptilian brain that uh, came in first. And then we got the emotional brain, which is the limbic system, and the temporal lobe, which is quite affected in head injury, mild or moderate. And finally, we became human, per se, and we had that little layer of gray matter over the brain called the cortex, whereby we think, we dream, and we do so many things. So this is roughly the evolution of the brain itself. And just to take you a little bit back, it's Im important to know those things, that the Egyptian, <laughs> I don't know what they think now with all this uh, spring, spring revolution, that the brain is worthless. And the heart itself contained the soul and the mind. And for Aristotle, he had a different view at all. And he's not very far away, really, when you talk in human evolution in million of years. There's only a few thousand. And then <coughs> the Greek had a different view from all this. They had the, the, the brain is the head, the, the home of sensory awareness. It's very true. And Hippocrates finally said the brain is the messenger of understanding. Plato had some uh, mixed feeling about it. They said the mind has to exist in the brain. This is where people like Wilder Penfield, the famous Canadian who did seizure surgery and stimulated the brain at the end of his life, he wrote this book, Mystery of the Mind, and because he was seeing the brain and stimulating the brain and producing this and that, I said, wh where is God? Where is, the, where, where is the soul? And people get mixed up into that. I'll try to get you through this evolution of the brain, I think, because we are using few things now in the rehabilitation of injured people. Uh, when I say uh, 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 injured people, injured from stroke perhaps, injured from uh, Alzheimer, whatever, this is it's relatively the same basic things that you know. And now it started, not long ago, Galen said, look, uh, the, just a moment now, there are certain parts of the brain which, which may produce uh, something else than this one. And the beginning of the 14th century, just not long ago, just not long ago, 14th century, we start drawing the brain 
is Leonardo da Vinci, and then you see where the uh, temporal lobe is, the frontal lobe is, etc. And again, looking at the side of the soul, the pocket of the brain, which are called the ventricles, was seems to be Rene Descartes, the famous uh, uh, "Je pense donc j'existe," I, I think, therefore I am. He said the pineal gland, which which doesn't have to do anything with that. So all these people have speculated on the mind where it is, but the real McCoy of brain. Uh, anatomy, physiology, and surgery started with that famous guy, with Sir Thomas Willis in the 17th century, who discovered the circle of Willis, and then the blood vessel in the brain, and we name it all the time the circle of Willis. He started observing, like a physician, like a, a scientist, hypothesize and test. <coughs> this is important for people who are injured. And to me, it's fascinating. These are new things that I had to gather from uh, just recently published data from here and there to put it all together for you. If you look at it, 100 billion neuron, numbers are just frightening. 50 billion of supporting cells in neuroglia. That famous neuron which thinks has soldiers around. I'm not going to name them for you, but we call them neuroglia per se. And there are synapses. This is 100 trillion of synapses. And at one time, we thought the brain, you know, once you are set in your way above the age of 15, you are stubborn like a mule, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. No, things have changed. With the new technology that we have, we have found out, and I'll show later on, that the brain is adaptable to plasticity. It is a good example of changing. I see three or four of my patients up there, and the, how the plasticity of the brain can rewire things differently. Uh, and then the, your famous corpus callosum, which part of the uh, injury, the bad injury, occur, are sh shattered. This is the main connection between right and left side of the brain, and it has about 200 million nerve fiber. Just look at this. <coughs> it's really holy. If you believe in holiness, that's holy. This is the neuron and all its synapses with high magnification electron microscopy. And this is the functioning cells. And look at this intriguing synapses that we yet don't know nothing about. And it gets more complicated. I'm making it very simple. And, 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 and uh, you can see how these neurons, which have been disrupted, and their tails, their fibers are going here and there. Are they going the right place? Are they going to regenerate? Uh, what kind of chemistry is involved in it? And this is how now we uh, think about uh, uh, the brain as a chemical. It has to be holy because uh, anybody, any organ in your body is not protected so much like this brain. There are 22 bones. I can't name them all today, but at, at, at least I can name 20. I mean, they are, <laughs> they are all protected. In spite of this protection, uh, we see injury, we see concussion without helmet, etc., etc. I will dwell on that in a second. Uh, and then you look at the human being himself. There are about 100,000 genes interact to create the human being. And from those, there are 30,000 are specific <coughs> to the brain. So that closer to the head, to closer to, to God, that's why the people said, it is God because this has to be the thinking one because he's very close from him. Uh, 30,000 are specific to the brain. And this is just the beginning. We think we are chemical human. We are all hormonally induced human. We are just start seeing now pathway. Pathway, believe it or not, of why do I do good? There is a pathway in my brain, besides my DNA from before, etc., wherever I came million years ago, but there are pathways of chemistry which tell me to do good or tell me to do bad. There are books written on, you know, on this. But these are the most important substances that are important in head injury, and, and, and we haven't done anything yet for them. There are a lot of research going on and so forth. You talk, for instance, about sleep serotonin at the, and the brainstem level. Every single chemical has its place in the brain and has its function. 
So there are neuropathway. This is an example of a pathway of serotonin injected, stained, to tell you where is the sleep pattern uh, is. These are chemicals in the brain itself. So we are talking about chemistry. And we know that very well. I mean, this is the function of the brain that we know. You know, you have your frontal lobe, uh, and then you have your speech area, and you have your hearing, interpretation, sensation. The brain works as a global uh, unit. And then even though we divide it uh, uh, into regions, uh, but this is gross, gross knowledge. How we have gone into evolution yet with the brain function. We are just at the beginning. Just an example of those chemical centers in the brain, the pleasure centers, for instance. They are induced by hypothalamus, basal ganglia. There are certain substances which produce it. I'm going to dwell quickly on it. Even love and attraction associated with serotonin and dopamine. A lot, lot of those uh, love acute uh, thingy may not last more than uh, uh, three years because of the serotonin depletion. No, I don't want to. <laughs> 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 I, I, I don't want. I don't want to confuse you now. And then I will just think about. It. And then uh, pleasure substances, oxytocin, endorphin. I'm to putting that to see that we are yet at the embryonic level of our understanding of the brain and our rehabilitation. Gross. We are gross in rehabilitation because we don't know yet. Uh, those who have seen the Matrix, uh, the movie, and all this, uh, this is coming at the end of this, of this, of this first part of the talk. Uh, th this is, for instance, uh, falling in love. Uh, register the recognition. 